Hey, what's up everybody? We're just gonna freestyle this video. Hey, I'm Damon, and on this channel we usually talk about the intersection between leftist stuff and Christian stuff, but I also happen to be an ex-evangelical. And it's interesting right now how in the midst of all this news of coronavirus, the other big news is all the stuff that's getting cancelled. And what else is cancelled? Church! Even church is cancelled! But I've also known plenty of people who go to their job, spend time with their family, try to get some sleep, and then they got their pastor saying, go to this event, this event, this event. Hey, why weren't you at this event? Hey, why weren't you at this Bible study? Hey, we really missed you this Sunday. And it's like, ah, I need a break. Because, <laughs> of course, family and the job is first. And... So often, I've known plenty of pastors because that is their job and they just pick their hours. Over a couple years, they can easily lose touch with what it's like for normal working class people. And they start to shame their congregants for not being able to go to every event. And it's like, hey, bro, we don't pick our hours like you do. Chill. So a bunch of these churches are canceling their gatherings each Sunday and also the gatherings throughout the week. And I don't see any of them mentioning it, but I'm sure a bunch of them are terrified about where their staff's income is going to come from because their staff's income comes from the offerings given each service. And I'm sure that has to do also with why they're still wanting to do like streaming the services, a hey, check out the podcast of the services, we're going to keep doing services, but just online. I'm sure part of that, of course, is providing something for the people who miss going to church, but also so we could make sure we keep getting those online donations coming in. And it's understandable. It's like, it's the staff's income. They're not like, they're not like getting, a lot of churches aren't getting rich off people's offerings. It's their incomes to feed their family. But it's interesting because it looks bad, I think, for them to be like, hey, can you, can you guys make sure to keep giving offerings? And so they're just going to be like, yeah, tune into the podcast. And at the end of the podcast, hey, everyone, please make your online donations. But what I really wanted to talk about is what are you going to do now that church is canceled? Because here's the thing. No one's going to know if you don't tune in digitally to these online digital services that a lot of churches are suggesting you still go to. You can skip. <laughs> I think it's also interesting that this is all happening during the season of Lent. You know, Lent. When we commemorate that time in Jesus' life where he went out into the wilderness for 40 days away from everything. And yet today, so many churches during Lent start upping up the events that they want everyone to go to so they could be at church even more. Remembering that time that our guy literally left all society and didn't go to any events. We all need breaks from all this stuff that we're constantly expected to go to outside of work. I worked for an evangelical church for years, and then I left in August 2017. And after I left, I remember thinking, I wonder what Sunday morning is going to feel like when I have to wake up and not go to church. And I remember it feeling like every other Sunday, because for several Sundays before that, I would wake up dreading going to church and not wanting to go to church. And then I just woke up with the same feeling and now I didn't have to go. I just go back to sleep. And I know there are plenty of people out there, especially in evangelical or conservative churches, who really want to take a break from it, who really want to experience life outside of it, but they feel like they can't because of social pressures and or because of certain duties and responsibilities that they've taken on being a part of that church. And now they get an opportunity to take that break that I know plenty of people have been wanting so bad. And I was going to say, what I realized over time after leaving the evangelical church, looking back, that there was a whole bunch of little toxic stuff that I didn't even recognize when I was there. It's like I had the big reasons for why I left. And then later I was able to look back and realize, oh, there's a bunch of little stuff that I should have paid attention to. And I wasn't able to until I spent some time away from it. Like when you leave a toxic relationship, you have the big reasons you leave and then you spend time away and you get back to some normalcy and you realize, 
oh my god, there was a bunch of toxic stuff in that relationship that I didn't even realize until I spent time away. Same goes for church, and which is why I'm actually really happy for people who get to spend time away. Because after that, I started to say, I think most people, definitely pastors, should spend like at least a year away from church so that they can start to regain what normalcy actually is outside of the normalization of that church community. And they can actually see how real life actually is outside of that constant saturation of that culture so that they can maybe not go back or go back and see what they need to change. And now we're all being told church is canceled. Now we all get to do that. And I think that's a really cool opportunity because that's a big toxic element to a lot of conservative churches is the normalization where every week we hear the same things over and over and over. We see the same behavior over and over and over and we think it's normal. We don't think about it. It's just there. And then when you spend time away, suddenly you realize, why did I put up with that? Wait, what? And you can't see it until you spend time away. I'm not telling everyone leave all their churches forever. I don't care what church you go to. No matter what church you go to, I'm not going to tell you that. That's up to you. But I think it's a really great idea to take some breaks from your churches or from any group that you spend a significant amount of time in. So this time when church is canceled, you get to actually experience a more authentic Lent where you aren't so oversaturated with the narrative that has become so normalized and fed to us for such a long time. And you get to explore. Because also, now is the time where you can actually start listening to other voices and reading other voices. Now is the time where you can actually start reading all those people that your pastor said you shouldn't. <laughs> listening to all the people that your pastor said you shouldn't. Hanging out with the people that your pastor said you shouldn't. It's heresy time! <laughs> When I worked in the evangelical church, I was reading a bunch of heresy, <laughs> a bunch of progressive people that were considered heresy. And for the longest time, I was just trying to make it work. That's why it took so long for me to leave. And by the time I left, I just it was literally impossible for me to make it work, even though my so my theology had progressed years before I'd left. But I was reading a lot of that stuff. I was very influenced by a lot of that stuff. And I remember multiple times having multiple pastors and mentors tell me, hey, don't tell people that you read that. It's okay that you're reading that. I get it. You're smart, Damon. You read a lot. You explore a lot. But do not tell other people that you read that person. Do not quote that person to other people. Do not share this stuff with other people because it'll lead to confusion. I was told that sentence plenty of times by pastors, leaders, and mentors. It'll lead to confusion. They can't handle it. I know you're smart, Damon, so you can handle it, but other people can't handle it, so don't let them know about all this other stuff, all these other ways of talking about the Christian faith, of interpreting the Christian faith. They can't handle it. Just let them stay listening to just our little corner here of the Christian tradition. So now's the time where you can actually explore, read all the stuff they said you shouldn't read, actually start to consider other perspectives because no one's around to tell you not to do that because they're supposed to be in their house minding their own business. And when you're able to explore different perspectives, that starts to become the new normal. I remember when I was in the evangelical church years and years ago, I had a friend come up to me and tell me, hey, Damon, I know you have some like different thoughts on the afterlife, like maybe a little universalist stuff. And I was reading the book of Isaiah the other day and I came across a verse where it kind of sounded like something else, like universalism. And then he's like, and I had a universalist thought. And he told me this with so much fear and dread almost as if he was confessing to me he had a lustful thought or something like that. I had a universalist thought, and I don't know what to do. What do I do? He was so scared. And I told him, uh, you should like explore that. You should like look more into it. And he got even more scared. He looked around and he's like, I'm about to be licensed, like as a pastor in our denomination. 
he was like, no way. And then his girlfriend started to walk up. He's like, oh, we'll talk about this later. And then we never talked about it again. Years and years later, I was out of that church and I talked to some Episcopalian priests and told them this story. And they all just bursted out laughing because that is a funny, silly story. And I remember feeling like, ah, oh, this is such a better environment or this stuff that people used to be terrified to talk about is just laughable. It's the new normal. And I appreciated that moment so much. Also, that dude who terrifyingly confessed that to me ended up leaving the denomination later, too. <laughs> and is now doing his own thing and probably fine with being a heretic. I haven't talked to him in a while. But yeah, it's heresy time, people. <laughs> now is the time to actually explore. Now is the time to reflect and contemplate and figure your own spirituality out while you're not being oversaturated with what you've been usually fed. And in case what I'm saying about all this heresy stuff is freaking you out and you need like a Bible verse to stand on. I know. I know. Uh, I'll give you a Bible verse. First Corinthians 3 21. When Paul is realizing there's a bunch of people in the Corinthian church arguing back and forth saying, I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. I follow Cephas or Peter. He says, hey, let no one boast about human leaders for all. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future all belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. That was the ancient Christian Pauline view that all things are yours. You can explore and claim truth wherever you find it. Now it seems to be because you are of Christ, because you are a Christian, you only get this little corner of truth. No, Paul is saying, because you are of Christ, because you are a Christian, you get to claim the truth wherever you find it. All things are yours. So go explore. Also, when it comes to getting involved in projects that will help people who are most vulnerable during coronavirus, try to find some secular projects and activities and organizations to help with instead of the church stuff that I'm sure plenty of churches are going to start. So I'm sure there's plenty of stuff you could Google for within your community, but you can also talk to your neighbors, go out to your neighbors and ask them if they need help, figure out what you can do for your neighbors in this tough time. Seriously, a lot of people are very vulnerable. So make sure that you actually consider the most vulnerable in this time. And that's actually a way more Christian thing to do than to just go along with whatever your church is telling you you should do. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I just... I am thinking of like just so many people when I'm making this video that I know were just dying for a break <laughs> from church over the years. So it's really Lent, y'all. Thanks for watching this video and make sure you subscribe and watch a bunch of my videos if you got time to kill. I have a whole bunch of videos and watch my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash whoisdamon. I'll be streaming a lot more because I have some more free time now because a lot of stuff that I usually go to throughout the week that didn't let me stream as much as I wanted to have been canceled. So we'll be streaming more. So go check that out. Also, you can support me at patreon.com slash Damon Garcia. I'd really appreciate that. There's also a bunch of exclusive videos over there. Make sure you join the Discord, hang out with some people that are really cool that talk about this stuff. Link in the description for Discord. And shout out all my patrons who are already supporting me. Stephen Harp, James Finley, Keegan James, Keith Wetzel, Kristen Mouse, Marina Black, Mike Togman, Mimi McGann, New Transcendentalist, Onion, Peter John Blake, Ranger Jenny, Refined Your Scene, Sam Osakwe, and everyone else. Appreciate the support so much. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.